Hello and welcome to the server guide for DayZ. If any of this helps you, please leave a like and a subscribe. I'm an extremely small channel and it genuinely helps me so much. Whether beginning or returning, to get the full potential out of DayZ, you need to know how to use, navigate and pick what servers are best for you. I'll break it down into three sections. Information you probably need to know about the servers, including pros and cons of official vs community. How to use and navigate the servers, including joining community servers and different maps. And then I'll end with what servers I think you should look for, as well as some additional information I think you should know. So, let's get into the video. Official vs Community so, the first thing you should know is the official servers are servers released and maintained by the developers, whereas the community servers are owned and run by the gamers. You can actually rent one yourself, I'll leave a link in the description for anyone interested in doing that or for anyone who was just curious about the prices. But let's start with talking about the benefits and the negatives of using official servers. Firstly, if you create a character on an official server, you can move or swap over to another official server and keep that character and all the gear. This is great and useful for many reasons, because sometimes the population of a server can drop and if you want to engage more with other players or move to a more popular server or even meet some friends, you don't have to start with absolutely nothing. You can also use this to your advantage by finding more loot on lower populated servers and then switching over to higher populated servers where loot is scarce so you can engage in combat with a full stomach and a better weapon. However, but this ease of server swap does lead to an issue called ghosting. So what is ghosting? Oh god I hate this. So you have a guy trapped in a building, they can't get out without you shooting them, you've got all the exits covered, you're confident you have them. However, a minute later, they appear behind you and blow your brains all over the trees like Pebble Dash. Why is this? Well, essentially they've logged out of the server, joined another official server, changed positions and then rejoined only to flank you and, well, Pebble Dash. It's not too common, but one of the amazing things about DayZ is the potential for standoffs like this and it's just not really possible on official servers. Other issues include the poor loot economy in general. They have loot respawns, which I'll touch on more later, but it doesn't always do a good enough job and most times highly populated servers are almost completely empty. I know I just said you can switch between highly populated servers and hardly populated servers for loot, but at the end of the day, you shouldn't have to, to enjoy the game to its fullest. Also, it's harder to get in contact with admins on official servers, so if any issues do happen, and they do happen sometimes, you could be faced with being in a situation where you're probably just gonna have to let it go. This is annoying and don't get me wrong, you can find admins if you look hard enough online for official servers, but it can be a pain and it's not as easy as community. Though sometimes things happen where the admins can't help. Yeah, see, there's a zombie over there. now. I usually don't like shooting zombies, but there's only one, so I just want to get him out the way, and then I can focus. Easy. Two, three, four. He has friends. Getting scary. Ah, not good. Just get, no, stop it, stop, stop hitting me. How is this getting so bad? Oh. Run, 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 run. I just wanted to be left alone while I explored. Oh. Oh well. The base system. Oh, the base system. The base system is almost completely pointless on official servers. Don't waste your time. They are too weak. It does nothing to protect the loot you get. You're much safer finding a hole and burying something. Save the bases for community where it can take a hell of a lot to break into a base. Which is how it should be. But you'll probably get raided everywhere on every server eventually anyways. So you just don't want the wolf blowing down your house on the first attempt. That's the basics of official, now onto community. Community servers can have way more loot and they don't allow you to ghost. If you switch to a new community server, you lose all progress so no one will be sneaking up behind you after logging out. But keep in mind they can still log out for like a minute or so, let you approach and then log back in in the same spot and then shoot you in the face. It's happened to me a couple of times, just throwing that out there. Community also have more seasoned players so the interactions are way better, especially considering it's an unwritten rule for most people to not kill new spots. Well, like 70% of the time, but in official servers there are so many people around the coast you can sometimes get killed before you even leave it. Plus, there are lots of rules on some community servers so you can usually find one to suit your needs. There are even a few where you're not allowed to loot bases or even kill another player. You're just there to survive and meet people. You can also get some cool alterations to community servers such as they can have longer or shorter day and night cycles, high food spawns or low food spawns so if you're a player who dislikes or prefers one or the other, there should be a server to 
suit whatever needs and wants you have. One last positive here is sometimes your favorite YouTubers have their own servers you can play on too. So if there are any Daisy YouTubers you like, check out to see if they have one on the Discords or YouTube. Furthermore, when you join some servers, a Discord link will appear somewhere on the screen for a few moments. Very useful to look out for if you want to meet new players and contact admins about any issues you have. But Although this all sounds great, it's not without its flaws too. As I said, you can only move players on official servers, you can't move players between community servers, so playing on a new one is always starting over again. This can be a negative if you want to try new servers, meet up with friends, or if the server gets closed down, which isn't really common on any well-used community servers, so I wouldn't really worry about it, but just know it is a possibility, and servers with consistently few users probably won't last that long. Additionally, there can also be waiting lists for the best servers that take forever to get into so meeting up with friends isn't always as quick and easy as you'd like. Another problem is most of these servers can be empty or near an empty so getting a full adventure on a server you like isn't always as easy as you'd want either. Having a server with cool rules and settings is great but if nobody is on it, it can be a drag. Though it's also somewhat of a backhand and positive because it's only really a thing because there's so much choice available. Literally pages and pages of servers. Another arguable negative for beginners is you usually come up against long term players so winning them in a one on one fight can be way more difficult especially considering they're going to know a lot more tricks than you know this can be very frustrating for beginners and that's not to say that you won't lose battles on official because you will but it's a little bit more even because official have way more beginners than community and that's pretty much everything i think you should know about the pros and cons of official versus community I apologize if some of the explanations here are too simple but there are people who genuinely are starting from scratch so i'll try to include something for everyone this works the exact same for PlayStation, so don't worry, I've just picked a random console. Nothing will be different except the buttons. Firstly, you want to click play. This will take you to a screen here called the server browser. Now, immediately, you can see the top left shows where on official servers. So let's take a look. Starting from left to right, here's what everything means. You can add any servers you like to your favorites by clicking on Y for Xbox and Triangle for PlayStation. Your favorites will show up like this. This padlock indicates whether or not a password is required to enter. And as you can see, that is never really the case on official and most of the time this space will be empty. The icon here, which is a wrench, indicates if you have the required DLC map or if you need the DLC map for Livonia to access that specific server. If you don't, it will have a little red circle next to it. Next is an indication of whether or not the server is using a mouse and keyboard. The names used for official. They usually always start with DayZ, followed by either the word Livonia to indicate you need the DLC to play on this server, or the geographical code. This indicates where and likely who will be on the servers when you access them. I'll add the list of what each one means on the screen right now. In front of these letters, you will have a code. Each official server has a code you can share with your friends, or just remember and write down. But don't forget, you can just add them to favorites at any time. Some of these servers are first person only as indicated in the brackets. I'll talk more on them later. The word temporary may also be in brackets. Any official server labeled temporary are usually there when player numbers are high. This happens when updates roll out, sales go on, I think around the holidays, and basically any time the player count rises. But they adjust it according to how many people need them, so expect a few of those to disappear throughout the year. I'd avoid these unless absolutely necessary to use. Lastly, on the official servers, you have the amount of players on the server. Well, more of an estimation. As well as the amount that can actually be on that specific server. So, community. There are a lot more servers here, and as you can see, not all of them are as clearly labelled as official. But they're all still fairly simple to figure out based on what we know. This needs a password, this does not. This has mods, this does not. But a lot of the servers will detail what they have in them. For example, high loot, more food, no PvP, and so on. And if you want to find a specific one without crawling through hundreds, just type it into the search bar here. If you type in food, 
Save us with the word food in the title will come up and usually serve us with higher food or loot will say so in the title. Usually you'll get like loot times five, which is obviously a significant increase in the amount of loot you should find on that specific server. Community servers want you to use them so their name is really a way for them to advertise. They're trying to attract you to get you to play on their server, which is why searching for specific words works so well. Oh, and you can also add community servers to favorites. And that's it. If there are any questions, please feel free to ask. As a beginner, what server should you choose? Official or community? Honestly, this is a much debated point within the Daisy community. Personally, I recommend the official servers to start off with. They're not without the flaws, but they do have their benefits. And the biggest one being they teach you the core gameplay. Once you can survive there, you can pretty much survive anywhere. Whereas going to a server with higher loot spawns and then transitioning to the normal servers might not teach you what you need to know and will probably slow the whole process down. It's much better to learn the skills you need to know and then adapt them to other servers rather than learning how to survive on one specific server and then starting from scratch on the next one which has proven to be way more difficult now. Plus the PvP is a little easier for new players as most new players tend to gravitate towards official servers. Eventually you'll build confidence and skills. Skills that you acquire over a long career. Skills that make you a nightmare for people like me. <laughs> but seriously, although I recommend you play on official, eventually you should then progress on to community, at least experimenting with them, because there are some great community servers, albeit way more difficult ones too, but official will learn you everything you need to know, and then you'll adapt quickly to most community servers. However, and this is very important to keep in mind, this is your game and it's your story. There is no point in playing on a server you are not enjoying forcing you to stop playing. There is definitely an argument to be made for starting on a less punishing server and working your way up. There is no server that is completely easy so it's entirely reasonable to avoid official altogether and find a random community one to start learning the game on. My recommendation of starting on an official server is just that a recommendation and that worked for me but we all have our own ways of learning so don't pay attention to anyone who tells you how you should play your game isn't a wrong way to enjoy it you absolutely need to do what's best for you and as for should you start out on Chinaris or the DLC map Livonia, there's not much difference, but I definitely recommend as a beginner starting with Chinaris first. Livonia is a cool map, but I'd recommend focusing on one map at a time when you first start because you really need to benefit from familiarizing yourself with local resources and towns. And the easiest map for that, in my view, is Chinaris. Yeah, I could definitely do with a better knife, to be honest. <sighs> How many of you do I have to beat off? He says, really hoping to get that promotion at work. Few side notes. When a server is about to restart, you do usually get a warning, especially on official servers. They save one last time a few minutes before they restart, so anything you collect in them last few minutes will likely not be there when you return. A good note is, some people prefer to log out before the server restarts to make sure they keep all the gear. When it restarts, it will kick you to the main screen showing your character, and then you can try to log back in in a minute or two. Bases will not be reset, neither will loot, but events such as helicopter crash sites may relocate and reset. The restarts are mostly to avoid glitches and improve performance of the server. Loot is reset on a system called Central Loot Economy, or CLE which means the server resets have little to no impact on overall loot spawns. However, it's a complicated little system they have, so there are a few not worth mentioning exceptions to this rule, but overall, everything should remain as it was, where it was before the server reset. Also, keep in mind that a server wipe is not the same as a server restart. A server wipe will reset everything but they usually aren't common and you do get an announcement from the developers before this happens. There are third person and first person only servers. You can't cross your character on them, so first person only characters can only go to first person only servers. Last note, official DayZ server maintenance and downtime occurs every Wednesday at 7am GMT. It usually lasts up to 3 hours, but in my experience, it's less than 2. But anyway, thanks for watching. Please leave a like and a subscribe. I do see and appreciate every single one and it really does help me out. I'm a very small channel and although I love playing other games, I will always bring out new DayZ content whenever I can. Also, let me know what you think in the comments. Do you agree with what I've said? Do you disagree with what I've said? Have I left something out? Please let me know. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.